I'm here in Poplar, LB24 team, with police team and varied other teams. We have the rapid response team here, residents. We have Sister Christine from the local St. Matthias Church. Um, they're all, we're all here today for the flash search. This is the third flash search in the series that's been going on in Tower Hamlets. Um, it's an ongoing commitment, um, Operation Leipzig, that the police have called it. it. As I've said, it's an ongoing commitment for Tower Hamlets to keep Tower Hamlets residents safe. Um, you can see, as you can hear, there's a briefing going on as I'm speaking by D.I. Sue. Sometimes, uh, sometimes even the top as well. Oh, what the, the DI um, You were here uh, at another flash search, so um, yep. What you um, were looking for knives, as you said. Yes, yeah, so we're faith leaders today and members of the local authority, uh, local residents. Um, we're going through this park, um, trying to find knives, any items we're unhappy with. Um, it's obviously quite a complicated park, so what we're trying to do is. There's no exact science to searching, so we're trying to get through and do as thorough a search as we possibly can. Um, the thing about these sort of bushes, um, as we saw with Shadwell, we've seen with Bethnal Green, um, it's not just searching at the base of it, it's actually searching within it, because this is quite a thick bush, and we're going to have to sort of make sure that they're not putting knives on top, yeah. anywhere where they can get in instant access to them. So that's, that's pretty much what we're doing now. Yes, um, I've also found a, yeah. uh, I found a bag, big bag here, yeah. about a, two months ago. Um, they did it, they came and uh, handed it in. Oh, 20 days. reps. Really? Mm. This is quite an intricate... Um, I think it's right next to the college. Mm. Um. We've actually found... There's been some weapons found in the hedges. There's been knives and screwdrivers. Um, officer, would you just like to tell us what, what we've just found, what you've just found here? Well, over uh, in the bush next to the college, um, so some machete, about yeah. 15 inches long, oh. uh, in a sheaf found in the bush next to the next to the college. Is it actually, was it in the packet? It looks like it was in the, yeah. bought new. Yeah. It's been, well, it hasn't, it's no rust on it, it hasn't been there long. So, uh, yeah, good find. Oh, great. Oh. What we found so far, I mean, everyone's aware that we found this. I mean, that's a beast of a knife, you know, in anyone's sort of like viewpoint. So that's something that is going to be um, doing someone some serious damage. Um, so that's that. I mean, that's, that's the find of the day for me. But mind you saying that, all of these are as equally as important because they're just taking instant army bottles, for example, can all be put in people's hands and, and used. Um, as Sister Christine said, you know, 
you, you hit someone over the head with a bottle, it can be just as dangerous on as many occasions. Um, this is uh, this is interesting. Hammer with a sharpened um, sharpened edge to it. There's no no need whatsoever for this to be in this park, uh, especially where kids play and anyone wanders around has a good time. Uh, chisels again, instant arming. Uh, selection of hammers easy to conceal in waistbands and pick up. Instant arming, obviously. Someone found this. It was a young lady found this. Yeah, good spot, mate. I mean, to be fair, you know, you just count it as a bit of plastic. But if you're having a, a gang fight and you stick that in your hand and you're going up to someone like that, that's going to be mistaken for a knife any day of the week. So that comes with us, you know, regardless of what it is or isn't. Um, poles, more bottles, screwdrivers. Again, just as nasty as knives if you're stabbing them in the right places. Um, obviously, the yellow knife, kitchen knives taken out of probably a parent's kitchen without them knowing. You know, so that's why parents have got to be just as involved in this, if I'm honest, you know, becoming aware of what people, um, what their sons and daughters are taking out of the house on a regular basis. That's just as important. And that's what Operation Leipzig focuses on. Baseball bat, we all know what a baseball bat can do. Iron poles, just as dangerous. And uh, obviously an assortment of other bits and pieces. So that's a really good find. It's probably one of the best finds for one location we've had. And this is the third search we've done. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah, it's it's hard to get some sort of um, it's hard to get some sort of uh, process with this sort of place because it's like a maze. It's built like a maze where we've got loads of little narrow um, passages. But what we're going to do is we're going to um, bag this all up, uh, get it secured, then we're going to move on to Poplar Park. Park. Okay, so we will get that done, and then we'll do it in very much the same way. Um, thanks very much. And Shay, coordinate this side. You can continue search down that side, these bushes here, it's a big old area, so just take your time and then we'll go around and we'll search a little bit here, me, this group here, and we'll let these guys continue to search this side. <laughs> wasted our time because we haven't found anything because what we've what we've had is loads of people from the local community uh, loads of mums and uh, children looking at us doing this sort of work and that's positive as well so what you saw was when we first came in here I went straight up to the young lady who was pushing her kids on the swing and said don't worry this isn't anything which is serious we're not doing a search because something serious has happened all we're doing is we're getting involved faith leaders local authority police concerned residents and we're getting involved and searching for weapons just to take them out of the, out the parks and you know what that's a big smile on her face and saying well thanks very much and that's really positive as well so thanks very much for taking the time today i really do appreciate it i know everyone's busy uh, with their own priorities and hopefully we can do this again in the future and continue with the success of taking life off the street so that's brilliant thanks very much di yeah, so it's been very eventful i would say um this search would you like if you can say something to our viewers. Yeah, absolutely. For me, it's, um, it's the third flash search we've done. So now we've done Shadwell, we've done Bethnal Green, and we're doing Poplar today. We've just finished it. F the thing for me is, um, sadly, uh, on, on each occasion, we've pulled out some pretty serious knives um, out of bushes and easy to reach places. Um, that's a positive thing, because we've taken knives off the street. So we've got to remain mindful of the fact that what we're doing here is really positive. Everyone's coming together. And this sends out a clear, clear message to people who are looking in the parks and seeing us doing this but the, the communities no longer will tolerate knives being in their in their parks and that's a really good thing and um, will you continue to do is it uh, as you've said before at your briefing earlier on um, it's an ongoing commitment um, will you be doing more is there more plans absolutely this is a key tactic for the police at Tower Hamlets to do these sort of weapon sweeps it's good for community engagement it gets it gets community involved in what we're doing we get to meet the community which is what we like doing as well um, and yeah we're, we're gonna be doing loads more of these Thank you. Thank you so much. I have here Sister Christine with me. She's very well known in popular community as well as in Tower Hamlets. Um, she's from St. Maya Thais's church where we, um, where the meeting point is. Hello, Sister Christine. Hello. Hello. Nice. Um, this, is, this is good. I'm really happy you're here today. 
This is good. Um, can you tell us um, why have, have you felt that you needed to get involved with the police team and the local authorities? Well, I live very locally and I know if we don't work together, we'll kill each other. Um, and we need the police and it's really sad that very often we see the police as our enemies when actually they're here to keep us safe and sound and we all love them when they come to our help but we the rest of the time we forget what they do for us um, and I'm really shocked today not at what we found but at the lethal danger damage those weapons can do and to think that someone will pick up a knife knowing you're not cutting a piece of butter you're actually damaging cutting injuring forever somebody and taking a life away. I think maybe we forgot what it is to take a life away because we see so much glorified violence if, which doesn't hurt us. We just watch it but it doesn't hurt us. Maybe we need to be hurt a bit more, I don't know. Um, but we, we need to get back to understanding what pain, when we inflict pain on another, what that means. And you can't take it back once you've done it. You can't take a life back. You can't give a back back when you've broken a spine or cut a spinal cord or done some terrible damage. As a community lead yourself, um, can you send a, what message would you like to give to the other community leads and faith leads? Well, we're all involved in this, but because this, uh, we've got a huge, a very large Bengali community here, I do feel that we need male role models that I think we've forgotten if, if dads aren't around, then the next best are older brothers or siblings because they have been there, they're earning a livelihood, they understand what life is like. We need to get them to teach their younger ones responsibility, um, that life isn't just fun. Yes, we do need fun, but life itself is too serious and we're living in an age when we see all around us evidence of that. Syria, Yemen, all over the place. So we just can't pass through like we're blindfolded. Officer, would you like to um, say something to the leads in the community? Um, so the reason why we've invited the, uh, the mosque and the churches um, along with this week is just the fact that people listen to religious leaders. Uh, I'm, the, I'm a police officer, I'm a faith community liaison officer for, for Bethany Green from Bethany Green Station. My words are not that important, whereas if a reverend or Sister Christine or an imam was to say a few lines, people are more likely to listen to religious leaders than my words. And the reason why I've invited the, the mosque community, not to just this search in Poplar, but Bethnal Green, Shadwell, where we found knives and drugs um, in, the, in the area, but it's so that the mosque, the imam sees what, what I see as a police officer, what we see as police officers, and then can deliver that message in the, in the Jummah Qutbah to make people more aware of the trouble of the issues and to make the community more involved in help tackling crime. Um, in the 70s and in the 80s, when the time when there was National Front, etc., um, my generation, of oh, my, my dad's generation and my uncle, and, and along with other people, cleaned out the racist people in town hamlets. And once they've cleaned that out, I'm not saying violent or whatever, but once they've got comfortable, they've taken the eye off the ball and they've failed, I'm not saying everybody, but they've failed the generation below us, my generation and the coming generation, because we've turned a blind eye to crime. So full, um, in the 70s and 80s, 60s, our uncles, there's 14, 15 of them, the older generation, living in one room, working, sending that money back home. And once they had enough money, they got married and brought their wives over here. And then they started a restaurant or whatever line of work it was. Now, what's happened after that is um, they've gotten comfortable They've set up houses, set up businesses, set up a comfortable life. But the generation coming below, they've turned a blind eye to the crime that's been going on, drug dealing, um, acid attack, you know, these gang on gang acid attacks, all sorts of crime, um, fights on the road, drunken behavior. As a, you know, as a Muslim, we shouldn't drink or we shouldn't smoke drugs or we shouldn't do drugs. But these are the things that have been building up. And because we've turned a blind eye, uh, my generation and generation below and the coming generation that we're going to keep at it because the older generation of so the part of the reason why I've involved the mosques is to um, they can get that message out to the Qutbah so that people can um, act on it now if an imam was to just talk about it say the police have told me this the police have told me that now let's be r real in a Qutbah some people fall asleep some people turn up last minute some people go in one another but when the imam when the reverend when the vicar 
rolls up their sleeves and says, I've actually gone out there and I've actually looked for knives and I've actually found knives, then they listen to the Imam more and they take his words more seriously. And that is the aim of bringing the faith communities together to do this uh, work with us. I'm here with leads from the local popular community mosque. Um, I'm just going to ask them um, how they felt about the search today. Hi. Hi. Well, the search uh, that we conducted today with the local police and uh, other faith leaders proved to be quite successful. Uh, not in this particular park, but in the previous park. We did find loads of weapons and shows us a message to uh, community leaders like us and other faith groups that there are such concerns within the community, needs to be addressed, needs to be tackled and uh, we from our part as local residents and uh, from the faith leaders uh, side will do what we can to actually counter and tackle the situation. Um, do, would you have links with other mosques as well in the area that you maybe hold a meeting and actually talk about what you've done today because you've come out hands-on involvement? Well, we, we are associated with the Council of Mosques uh, and uh, we do uh, give briefings of what we've get, uh, got involved with or get involved with. Um, with uh, local mosques, we do communicate and uh, reiterate what we've done and obviously they probably can reciprocate what we've done yeah. also within uh, their remit uh, in that particular area. So, yeah, uh, we do communicate. Is there anything you would like to add? No, that's... Well, my colleagues just covered everything basically. We are very happy for what we've done today. It's very positive. We want to give something back to the community. It's so much, it's not just about five time prayers, it's about the community engagement. So I'm very happy and proud of my community and the police officers. That's why I like to say nothing. Else. Great work, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. I have the DWO for Poplar here, Mick Real. Hello, Officer Real. I'm here. Um, what a great turnout today, you know, Sister Christine, rapid response, um, even a couple of lads from uh, the Wilcox State has come over and uh, got involved and uh, it's been a great find, loads of weapons off the streets, uh, you know, couldn't ask no more than that, it's been great. Can you um, stress the importance of this happening, you know, in the local communities and um, everybody coming together? I think it's great, um, let's say Sister Christine, um, who's well respected in the, in, in the area, has managed to bring people together. Um, we've got young lads on the Wilcox estate coming across, um, helping to look for weapons, get them off the streets. Um, and just can't say a big thank you, it's been great. Thank you, thank you You're so welcome. much. We've come to the end of this afternoon's flash search that just happened. You've heard um, a lot of um, words from the officers and Sister Christine and the faith leads of the community mosque. Um, myself, it's been really eventful. And I can't stress the importance of um, communities coming together, the local authorities, the police, for people to protect the communities. Um, as you've seen, there's been a lot of findings here, knives, hammers, um, other objects. There's been bats, ball, you know, a lot of bottles. It, it's just the importance of these ongoing search is very important and also shows the unity in the community and everybody coming together whether different walks of life people coming even young lads have joined in the search just by seeing the police here the local authorities here you know the local faith leads here from the muslim community from the christian community you know just showing that that's even motivated them to come and get involved so sending out a message is you know this has to keep going on and community, you as a community need to be involved. Thank you. Till next time.